the decision was not a knee-jerk reaction, not an emotional decision. I've evaluated the program on a consistent basis. To me, what, one of the things it really boils down to is November. We've not had the success in November. The Orange Zone, sponsored by Billy Whitaker Cars and Trucks. What's up? Welcome in to the award-winning Orange Zone podcast. I'm Tommy Sladak. We have James Mungro. We have Samantha Crosty. We have Ashley Wenskowski. We have Brendan Hodges on the producer mic. It is the big crew. It is the big show for a big reason on this emergency pod of sorts releasing early in the week. Dino Babers out at Syracuse football after eight seasons. The news dropping Sunday. We've had 24 hours to absorb it. How are you guys feeling with this? Let's start with James. Wow, you got the mic right there, nice and fresh. How about that? It was just easiest oh, eye contact. Goodness. Yeah, I, I hear that. A lot, 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 of, lot of stuff happened in the past 24 hours. Obviously, uh, Coach Baber is no longer with us, and um, it's going to be a big change up there. Um, you wanted this. Yes, I did, 100%. Uh, I think the fans wanted it. I think the, I know the alumni definitely wanted it. Um, six and six is not, uh, is not good, and that's something that we're not going to stand for, and unfortunately – you know, when things happen like that, things have to change. And, uh, you know, when you fire a coach, too, as well, the whole dynamic of the team is going to change, unfortunately. Uh, you know, especially with the transport, transporter portal now coming in, involved in this. I mean, how many guys are going to stay? How many guys, are, you know, are going to come transport in? Uh, so it's going to be a difficult road, I think. Uh, but I think eventually they're going to get it right. John Wildhack will get the right guy in here. And uh, hopefully we'll get this stuff turned around very shortly. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to look at this, and then we're going to be diving into it. But what's been standing out to you, Sam? Have you been thinking about Dino? Have you been thinking about the coach? What's been on your mind? I mean, what's been on my mind is is the numbers. You know, taking sort of a deeper dive into the numbers yesterday when we first heard about this news, it puts in perspective what he has and has not been able to do over the course of the last eight seasons. Two winning seasons, and that's it? two bowl games a 7 and 22 record in november listen just to say within it, eight even years though within, eight, within years. eight years and i under and and i think everybody even knows this by now but but i think dino babers is a great person and he radiated positivity but positivity doesn't pay the bills i mean you need wins you need more and it's not even to say i think there are certain programs where you talk about that 500 record six and six or whatever it is it's not that that's necessarily a bad record but it's just not good enough considering the talent and the resources and the fact that this is a power five program we can do better and we're filming this right now on monday so ashley and i were at john wildax press conference this morning and i i enjoyed it in that I thought it was more revealing than we expected it was going to be because he really did talk about November and he also gave that um, that benchmark of what he wanted to hit. Yeah, I was surprised this morning at how honestly honest and candid he was. Um, mm -hmm. He revealed that, you know, it really came down to, I think he said in the first 20 seconds or so, that it was about the November record, that 7-22 and 22 that you mentioned, that just these late season slides became the norm, and you can't have that. And he also said that the benchmark this year was 7-5, and five was a seven and five record. And obviously after they lost last week to, to Georgia tech, that's no longer possible. So it's something that <clears throat> Dino had to know was coming after that Georgia tech loss. Um, and, and wild hack also said that he was reminded of it after the Florida state game as well. I was a little bit surprised by that. I had thought that maybe a bowl game would be keeping him around, but you know, I'm think I'm in the same boat where it's, if it was going to happen, I'm happy they're getting a jump a, a jump start on the coaching search because that's a big deal. And, you know, we have standards. I mean, Syracuse alumni, Syracuse fans have standards. You know, they fired uh, Jimbo Fisher 7-3. and 7-3 three. Seven and three that he got fired. Mm. We're trying to just get over 500 and be mm. happy with that. And I'm not happy with being over 500. I'm happy with a winning record and a bowl game and the ki kids, you know, in the paper, national news, you know, that type of that type of reporting on these kids. And we're not getting that here. And that's because the program is is was was going down here, but now I think you know the best is you know for the turn of you know firing Dino, I think it's gonna go uphill now. Uh, it can only go up. It can't get no worse than what we're doing right now. 
Right. And we have Nunzio Campanelli will be serving as the interim coach. And a um, little bit of an interesting move with that. I think a lot of the times you almost expect it to maybe be an OC or a DC to fill in. Um, but in this situation, it was, you know, end of the day, it was Wild Act pointed to Campanelli as having experience. So he had been coaching with Rutgers for five years, had that same type of role. And to me, I think it also kind of points to, I don't know, we'll find out. Maybe he is a name that does stick around from this coaching staff, whereas whether it, I don't know if that alludes to Rocky Long and Jason Beck leaving, but I think there is a point of emphasis with Nunzio being named, um, or Coach Nunz as the players call him, being named the interim. And that's, that's very tough, too, you know, with Rocky being here this past year. Um, you know, the defense looked good. It was the offense. They fine. You know, I mean, it was more of the offensive Better problem. than fine. So, you know, it, it's tough. Um, and I don't know where they're going to go with that whole thing of, like, you know, normally when the whole staff gets fired, they don't, don't normally uh, retain coaches in, in most instances. But in this instance, you know, things may be different. You know, they may uh, have something worked out with, you know, keeping a couple of coaches and all that type of stuff. And, again, I, I don't think, like you said, I don't think it's a, a – all the coaches need to be gone. I just think maybe the head man that was calling the shots, you know, they just need a different shot caller. Right. And, um, I mean, let's talk about Dino for a second, right? It, it was such a unique situation because I believe 41 and 55 was the overall record. And in so many schools, especially in the Power Five, in the SEC, the expectations are so high. And if you have so a 7-3 mm -hmm. record, you can still – get you know you can still get fired and we'll be talking about him when later in the show here when we get into this coaching search but you know Dan Mullen a name that's been floated out there like at Florida I believe he went 34 and 15 in his first four years and got fired could you imagine if we're sitting four years into this new mystery era and it's 34 and 15 yeah the the mood around the fan base it'd be very high so the question is why did that work out where this losing record era Stuck around for eight years. It's because of those dips, valleys, and peaks. And You're the right. peaks came at the perfect time. For what you say, for as long as it did. I, I think, again, you look at 2018, and you had to think that fueled, okay, we'll see what sort of happens for the next few years here. But it's so interesting to me that this time around and this year, Wild Tax threshold was a 7-5 and five season. And I have to say, I think that that worked out great. Because let's just say that his threshold was six and six or something that is still attainable or just making it to a bowl game. I truly think in that case, if Dino sticks around, you have a couple more years that feel pretty similar to this one. I think if you were going to make the decision, the time to do it was right now. There wasn't going to be enough change where you could really be seeing any records that were all that different from 500 or maybe even a little bit lower, I think, over the course of the next few years. The question now, though, that I still was thinking about weeks ago, and I'm thinking about it again today, is how do you ensure that the next person does better? Is there going to be more resources? Is there going to be more money? I think the answer to that has to be yes, or else it's going to be really difficult for someone to do all that much better than Dino Babers as far as recruiting and talent and getting people to come play in upstate New York. Well, you know, I, I think a little bit, I understand what you're saying with that part, but I think there's a lot of hungry people out there. I say that. Uh, I know different uh, alumni myself that um, that are into coaching and stuff like that. Different teammates I've had, played with that are into coaching and uh, are successful in coaching right now. And I know they would love to have opportunity to coach here at Syracuse. Um, so, and not ask for a lot of money. <laughs> you know, I mean, they just want to be because because they have pride in it. And that's the whole thing. If you could find somebody that is familiar with the university, like you know Dan Mullen, uh, D Brown. Uh, you know, there's some, some names out there, you know, that's familiar with the program. They have more compassion, have more to lose in it, except for, except for just hiring a coach off the street, um, no affiliation with the program, never played here, never been to the Dome, never been around Syracuse community. So, I mean, by having someone that is familiar with the Syracuse community, Syracuse program, I think that's the best, best route to go. And also someone, you know, obviously has to be offensive mind, uh, offensive mind. And there's, you know, a lot of guys, you know, out there with offensive minds that, you don't have to pay in all this crazy amount of money that they're paying down in Texas, and then they bought the guy out. It's like, it's ridiculous. Like, it's, they're overthinking this. There's people out there. 
I think, though, that the problem, and I get what you're saying, Sam, is that the problem, while Dino Babers had eight seasons, and that should be more than enough time, the problem does go beyond Dino Babers. I think it will be hard for someone to come in here and to, you know, it's a world of NIL now. It, they're not competing at the level NIL-wise of some of these Big Ten schools and, of course, SEC schools and even a lot of the other ACC schools. It's facilities. It's what they have to offer recruits, and it's recruiting in the Northeast too. And so there's all these parts of it that I think do have to systemically change. Well, the facilities part, I can answer that part. They're, brand, they're building brand-new facilities up there, so that's all taken care of. And that's the whole thing, what I was saying, and the writing's on the wall already. Uh, when you build so, such an expensive facility for the players and you're not doing well, how are you going to bring more people? Not because of the facility. You need to bring change everything all up. So, you know, when you talk about the timing part of it, it's perfect timing. And that's from day one, that's what I knew where they were going to go at because you're not going to build a brand new facility and then keep the same coach and then try to also recruit and get NIL deals and all that type of stuff. You got to clean the slate off, start from the beginning. IRR deals, I think that's very, very good. <clears throat> but I think the way Syracuse has to do it is get the community involved in it. You know, there's different ways to get the community involved and have spoke, spoke, people, from, spoke, uh, spoke people from the community to represent that money to NIL. Yes. NIL. That's the way you get it done. Because people not going to just give money to, to university and not have no say and have them do what they want to do with the money. They need to have a committee here at Syracuse, Syracuse Community Committee, for money for the players. Orange Empire. Yes. So they have that. Um, should that have been set up a little bit sooner than it did? Yeah. I mean, you always want to be the first in on it, especially with something like this. But let's uh, – hitting on NIL for a second. First of all, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Forgot to hit that in the beginning. We have a TikTok page. We're on Instagram. We're all of that. We're and, everywhere. Uh, we, we love our commenters, seriously. It's, uh, we've had some really, really awesome discussions in there. I know this one will be a big one. Hit us with your names about who you want to see and what is the biggest attributes or, or maybe characteristics of a coach that you want to find out um, or you know put them in this new spot. But speaking on NIL for a second, and I've been, uh, you know, just ranting to Ashley for the last 24 hours about this. If a, the next coach, if this is someone that truly wants to come in and make this a winning perennial program, I need them to be asking a very important question, and it's finding out what the NIL situation is, speaking with John Wildack. What is the money that you're going to be telling me is coming in here in the next few years? Can this school be competitive with the top half of the ACC? Because if that question is not answered to my liking, yes. and I'm a coach that truly cares about winning and not just the money, I'm not going to be comfortable with it. Because end of the day, Syracuse is just at a disadvantage. We're in a cold part of the country. We're in the Northeast. We're not down South, where a lot of these players from Texas, Florida, wherever, want to stay closer to home. You need to stand out. And one of the things right now is you're checking off the facilities, but that next $25 million needs to be talking about the players, or else the four and five stars, they're not going to be thinking about upstate New York. Yeah, I would agree with that, Tommy. I definitely would agree with that. Look at that. You, 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 <laughs> can we, can we, you, you, can you, we, can we, all right, a little you, hug. Yeah, feels great. Right feels great. That's what I'm talking about. Let it out. Let Why it out. out. You want to get drunk after this? I also, out, boys. I mean, I think the money part also, even, even past NIL, the other thing is because you're talking, you were talking a lot about earlier, what is it actually going to be that draws people in? And yes, yeah, sure, there is the facilities, but I feel like you know as a former athlete, that's not the most important thing. You're looking at, the coach, of course, mm -hmm. and the culture and the team and how you like the way it feels there. So, yeah, the coach is the biggest thing here. You also have to shell out money for that. Who are you going to bring in? How mm -hmm. much money can you provide in that respect? You know what I mean? The more experience that these coaches have and the better their resumes are, the more money they're going to want. It, you know, it's another thing, too, is a lot of the kids that go to Division One schools, what are they trying to do? Get to the pros. Go play professional football, NFL football. How many guys do you think were up on uh, Babers, uh, uh, Babers' coaching staff that play professional football? How many times has Babers had people come around that play professional football? I spoke to the team one time this past summer. I play professional football. I should be around watching the team practice, all that good stuff. He introduced himself to me the first time this past summer in eight years. He should have reached out to me, called me. Hey, hey, James, you know, whatever, you know, shoot, just shoot the crap with me and talk about, a little, you know, about Syracuse football. Oh, you know, I'm the head coach here. They never did that. 
And I think, you know, for any coach that comes here to Syracuse, first and foremost, you connect to your alumni. Especially the ones that are nearby? <laughs> nearby, I live in the same community. That never happened. I worked at the Dome. Been in the locker room. That man never came over and said hi to me. It tells me, it tells me a lot. Well, let's get into that. Let's get into this coaching search. You need to have a, you need to have some NFL guys around. That's the whole point I was saying. Mm -hmm. Be around the team, see the positive. You know, talk to the teammates. You know, talk to the you know the younger guys. Tell them the do's and don'ts. You know, t this is how you accomplish things. Because in, in reality, is these guys are there to try to play professional football and get a great education. Right, big time. Um, Coaching, we, can, we could literally talk about this forever, and we're not going to do that. <laughs> but I think there's three groupings of a style of names that group together when it comes to this coaching search. The one is the Syracuse connections and the names that are mm. going to ring a bell. Mm -hmm. And one of them, we'll get into it in a second, is Doug Marone, who already coached here from 2009 to 2012. He's a name that does make sense to be a part of this search. The other grouping is the offensive-defensive coordinator at a bigger school, right? Brian Hartline at Ohio State. Um, I've even seen Manny Diaz at Penn State. The bigger names maybe have had some head coaching experience. They're ready to take that next leap. And then we also have the guys that are really getting it done at the smaller Division One programs. Holy or Division Two schools. Or Divi I, mean, I, mean, I mean, the coaches are coaches. I mean, if the guy, I think I'd rather – I'd, I'd guys, want some D1 experience. You know, but so the, I'm if not going to the guys that. are going to – I mean, look at Deion Sanders. Mm -hmm. I mean, he jumped, you know, and, and look where he's at now because the guys believe in him. Right. You know, and that's the whole thing. you got to have a coach that the players actually believe in. And I do think the players did believe in Dino for a little bit, but they, they, they lost something somewhere there. And I don't know where they lost to that, but they lost something. And the trust somehow got – Flip, flip flam, I don't know. But, I mean, as a player, you could see, you know, if I was a player at Syracuse, I know everything goes through the offense. I mean, everything goes through the quarterback. If our quarterback's hurt, we're going to struggle. We don't, have a, we don't have a good second string quarterback. You know, we're going to struggle. So right now, there's do or die, and that's what you saw in the football field for the past three weeks. It's do or die football. It's like, it's nothing holding back. Oh, we're going to say this for the bowl game. What do you mean? You're, 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 you know, you're five and six. You ain't saving nothing. This is do or die. So this, this next game coming up, I, I can only, you know, there's going to be all types of stuff happening. And hopefully the coach makes it fun for the kids. You know what I mean? That's the biggest thing. Make it, make it, make it fun for them because obviously their captain has left. The, the, the ship, you know, the captain of the ship is gone. <laughs> now the first mate's driving the boat. Hey, really quick. Yeah. I saw in the press conference that it said that Wild Hack did give Babers the option to coach the last game. Yes. Why didn't he take it? Didn't exactly give an answer, but I think I know my answer. Well, you know something? Now, okay, I didn't know that part. And that's, that's, you know, I was kind of hoping that he probably would coach the last game just as a team. Like we talked about last week with the coach up there in uh, North Syracuse. You know, you don't want to quit on your team. And he didn't quit on the team. You know, he, he's continued, he continued to coach. I, I think he, he, like, he knew what the writing on the wall was, you know. Wasn't getting it done. And you got to make changes. And, you know, by him not coaching the last game, the coach is probably saying, you know, he swallowed his pride and said, you know, let's, you know, let's – and it help, to me, it helps at the school. Yeah, no, yeah, that, that name is already yes. out there, yes. and I think in and it know, helps him too as well. It helps him as well exactly. too to get whatever he wants, whatever yes. he wants to do. Exactly. At the end of the day, you know, he's in his early sixties, doesn't look it, but he's he's gonna be a coach. I, can, uh, I don't more see football not in that guy's. I'm side. more concerned with the assistant coaches, okay, because that's where you know you're uprooted and you gotta take your family. You don't have a job now. That's, you know, and they're not making the same salary as the head coach at all, by no means. So, you know, it's, it's tough on the assistant coaches, but that's what you sign up for, unfortunately, in uh, college football coaching. Yeah. Brandon, I'm going to bring you in um, just because I'm having trouble pulling up our list. We have uh, eight potential head coaches for who's next for uh, this new era with Syracuse football. We have football. the eight that you posted, <coughs> I believe, on Sunday night, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what give, you're talking about? Give, me, give, me the, give us the full rattle, and I want to see what name or little tidbit about one of these coaches stands you out to the give crew Give me one here. second. I had the uh, shorter list that I had sent you on Sunday night. We're getting well. no service. I don't know if anyone else in Syracuse <laughs> has been dealing with Verizon issues, but we've been getting crushed uh. for the past two weeks. I've been I, whining nonstop. I, I, I guess we don't have a Verizon sponsor. I have sponsor. the list. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I guess we don't have a Verizon that, sponsor. that one, sorry. Blew that one, I guess. Yeah. Maybe next year. AT&T, what's good? <laughs> I'm a big AT&T girl. All right, All right. Yep. I have the list wow. right here. You're just trying so, to get free uh, stuff again. 
<laughs> I'm always promoting something on this podcast. What did you get not too long ago? That was okay. Can we stay Tums. focused on this, please? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're, let's we're go, keeping Brandon. It, we're keeping it light. Brandon. Okay. Uh, so obviously, we already <laughs> mentioned uh, Doug Marone. Uh, Tommy, we were discussing this in the newsroom early Monday, actually. Uh, not many people knew that he is a offensive line coach with the Saints right now. Well, offensive okay. line coach with the Saints, and he was an offensive <clears throat> line coach last year with Alabama. Alabama with Alabama. Alabama. So he's someone that he, he was at SU 2009 to 2012. What took them 25 and 25, this is post Greg Robinson, took them the two pinstripe bowl wins, goes head coach at the Bills, head coach with the Jags, and then takes those lower-level positions. Yes. And for someone to do that, that points to me, especially when it's one year at Alabama, one year at the Saints, that's someone trying to make a bigger move. And so I it's think possible. he's a big name. It's possible. He's got the CMY connections. He's okay. a line coach here in the 80s, uh, spent his first year after playing pro at Cortland State. Okay. So the mm. dude just, he bleeds CMY, and I like that. What else we got on I the list? I feel like you're like pitching things to Mungro here, and he's like giving his nod. He's saying like yes or no. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I have some I names mean, for myself, though. We as don't well, have to though, say it know? out loud. I, I, was just, I was just sneaking it in no, there. I, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, the second one's a familiar face, uh, even from last year. Tony White went to Nebraska to be their DC uh, under Matt Rule. Um, I haven't really paid attention to Nebraska too much this season. They're top, so they're top 15 right now. So he's he's clearly just been a dude that's been able to um, just have good defenses, even with the offenses on his team struggling. Top 15, he is the 3-3-5. So if you have any hope, I think, of keeping names like Marlo Wax, Justin mm. Barron around, the guy that was just with them would be the dude to do it. The one thing I know that James might have a problem with, or you guys might, is that end of the day, Tony's the defense guy. He would still need to come in and oh, have the, the yes. answer for the offense that has been struggling. And you, you hire a great coach, offensive mind person, then. And the next on the list is, could be one of them. Well, it, I, I do have a quick question regarding that. Is there any realm where Tony White gets hired as a head coach and Rocky Long stays to be DC? To you, Tommy. That'd be crazy. <sighs> the Maybe? Godfather, the grandfather of the three three five, and mm. one of his disciples running the show. I think it depends on the head coach's style of how he does things. If he's a complete offensive mind, yeah, why not, right? Yeah. Uh, but to me, Rocky taking that job was a I don't want to be a head coach anymore type energy. Yeah. So it's a good question, though. I like that. That's my job. I ask good questions. Uh, as for the next man on the list, uh, we're going out to uh, Colorado. Sean Lewis, offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach. Didn't he have play calling like taken away from him earlier this season? Though? Did he get that? <laughs> he back? did. Yes. Which, which most ex players, <laughs> which most ex players and coaches did not agree with. Okay. No, I, I hear Just you. Just saying. Uh, did, did they were averaging like, thirty-two points or something crazy. Did before he that. get that back at all? Because I know they've still Colorado is just. He's in turn. <laughs> I mean, it, they're playing good teams, too. But it, it, Sean Lewis, obviously, uh, at Colorado under Deion Sanders. Uh, their offense has been solid to great in most of the games they've played. Even in losses, they've put up big numbers. Also, to Mungro's point earlier, he's also someone who spent time at Syracuse already mm -hmm. under Babers as the OC and quarterbacks coach. I, I'm not, see, I'm not so sure if you want people to be affiliated with Babers. You know, the coaching staff pull you pull them from. You might want to get a clean slate and just find someone completely new. I get that's, that. You know what I mean? But that's some, it's very good, though. But I, you, I understand where you're going. I think on. it's maybe that is a, a negative to it, right, if you're trying to move away from that. But if this was someone that was here six, seven years ago but just has that familiarity, is that enough to as a, as well, a pro you, you, to outweigh the con? Well, the way I'm looking at it is I don't want the, the, the – when they, you know, if one of those coaches came back from Dino's um, yeah. eight years is already have a bias to the coach. Right. So there won't be no bias to the coach at all when the coach is coming. So, you know, he's bringing his own new guys in. Obviously, I think the defense love uh, – they, they really enjoy uh, Rocky. Right. So they probably would want Rocky to stay. But, you know, I don't know about the other guys, you know, yeah. that type of stuff. But, you know, that's something – you got to think about it as well. Right. It, I mean, this is, this is going to be some big, big stuff. Like, this is not just, like, a one-answer no. problem. Like, not there's, at all. there's no. so many different things that can uh, occur with the transfer portal to the money to the NIL to, you know, retaining coaches, new facility being built, you know. So This, this is the all. biggest decision that Wild Hack will make. And, like, and Ken oh, Severu. Yes. Oh, yeah. And, and the university. Yes, 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 yes. absolutely. Because that's, it. that's the other thing. Like, I know at the end of the day, this is a sports podcast, so we talk football. But 
I'm almost happy Deion Sanders got brought up once because that is just a perfect example of what hiring a great coach can do for an entire school. That school yeah. will never be the same. Like, it really does feel a like great it was motiv- A great motivator, someone that people trust, someone mm-hmm. that the players trust. It's all about the players trusting in that coach. If the players don't believe in that person, they're not going to play hard for that person. Right. And, and, we'll, and now it make, they make it easy. You can just transfer out. But mm-hmm. – you know, that's the whole thing. And, you know, Dion's going to get his stuff around. You know, the, they won some good games early on, and, you know, they're going to lose a streak now like that. But, you know, the players believe them. So they're going to work extra hard in the summertime. They're going to do the extra, go to, you know, not miss things and do the extra things right. Right. Well, I think that's such an interesting point that you brought up, too. Like, not just the school, but in a community like this where the school is so important to the overarching community as well you get the fan base back invested in football it's i mean it's the local economy like we were talking about earlier it's like literally tour it affects every realm of syracuse as a city because that school is so important here massive decision and for the sake of time i'm gonna rattle off some more names and i'm gonna see kind of what stands out to you guys um dan mullins next on the list right now he's working for espn um two years ago I said he traded in the coaching headset for the broadcast headset. No big deal. I like that line. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't mean he won't switch it back up. So he was he was the one that was fired at Florida after going 34 and 15. Unbelievable. Um, also coached under Coach P uh, your freshman year. He was a grad assistant. Was he really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, 98. <laughs> yeah, I, I know Dan Mullen. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he was there. He was my. He was a grad assistant. <laughs> like you just said, he did a breakfast check. He yeah. went to, you know classroom check. That's what he did. But Dan's a good guy. He's a good candidate as well. And then we also have Brian Hartline, Ohio State offensive coordinator. Bronco Mendenhall stepped down as Virginia head coach in 2021, had a lot of time at BYU. Jason Candle, head coach of Toledo. So that's the mention of the you know group of five lower schools where they are head coaching candidates. Obviously, Power 5 will pay them more money. Kurt Signetti with James Madison, head coach. And to me, he's a, I mean, he's one of the hottest names, and, and why wouldn't he be? JMU is, yeah. like, yeah. They're awesome. Yeah, like the fact that he's done that in their second season with the FBS, um, also let them play in a bowl game. But they're ten and one. It's it's pretty great. It's pretty great. What um what stands out to you? And obviously, I left some names off those lists, but I just wanted to keep it concise for the listeners. I I think as we were discussing, like. I think that I would be ready for some new blood. I think a lot of people would be ready for some new blood. I think as we discussed, if this is the most important decision for Wild Hack and and the school right now, maybe it is time to blow it all up and to really bring in somebody new. But I also think that Wild Hack has shown a real um, partialness to bringing in people with some sort of Syracuse ties. I mean, even in the other head coaching positions, Adrian Autry, Felicia Legat, Jack, either alumni, ex-players, people with experience in Kay- the 315. Kayla Trainer. Kayla Trainer. I mean, Gary the list Dave. goes on and on. Who he likes to hire has connections to this city. So I would be very surprised if it was somebody who had never spent any time in Syracuse. And, and not even just Syracuse, but he, made, he was so in detail, which I was, again, surprised about with how much he, he likes someone that has Northeast connections. Yes. Well, that's, that's, yes. that's obviously one of the biggest that's things huge. is having the Northeast connection. And I was glad you brought that up because mm-hmm. I was just – thinking that in my mind because there's so good players up here it, but but well no the, there, I mean, there's there, a lot of good hover, players but what i'm saying is like we know like penn state dominates so dominates so, that recruitment area so yeah. how do you take care of something like that you know would like dominate penn state moolah well no and a few <laughs> other things i i i have i have a suggestion okay i have a good suggestion okay there's a guy down there in east Stroudwick, pennsylvania named jimmy twilliger okay uh-huh. You said Penn State Frank Franklin, right? James Franklin. James Franklin. Yeah, I, know yeah. James, I know James Franklin. Just being smart. You gonna James, bring him up here? James Franklin played at ESU. Jimmy Twilliger plays. Uh, he's the head coach at ESU. Mm-hmm. He took you know took over for uh, James Franklin, offensive mind quarterback, offensive mind quarterback, uh, head coach at ESU. He is doing unbelievable, unbelievable things. They're in the playoffs right now. I mean. James, uh, James Franklin came from ESU. Why can't we get somebody from ESU? Come up here. So you're pushing. Well, he was at a few other schools in between there. But you're saying it's a coaching. It's a it's it, a stop along the way. It's a stop, and, and it's the you want the, you, you have PSAC pride, dude. I, I, yeah, I'm just saying. Like you know, we had a great coach down there, named Danny Dow's uh, from East Stroudwick, Pennsylvania, that has done un- unbelievable things. He retired. He finally uh, took the microphone off and gave it to another young man that you know, quarterback, played quarterback. Yeah. He was the Heisman winner, you know, back when he played. Um, for ESU, uh, 
Like, like, like I just said, Franklin played the issue as well as quarterback. He broke all the records as quarterback. Sure. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of people out there. There's a lot of people out there, and, you know, you don't have to pay him millions and millions and millions of dollars. You know, I mean, stuff like that. So there's, where there's a way, there's a way. You bring up a good point, right? Because there's going to be the names on this list, right, that is probably the top of where they can go money-wise. But I, I blank it on this right now, listeners. Help me out in the comments section. But a, a recent coach that's been having a lot of success, not long ago, like very recently, was at Wisconsin Whitewater. So the people jumping up and having success at lower levels is totally out there. It's just going to be a matter of, what is the most important to this school? And do you have an inkling on what you feel that is? I do, because even earlier when you were talking about the different categories, which I love the way you frame that, by the way, because it's true. There is like the orange connections as one thing that matters, or you have the coaches who are going from a lower level program to a higher level program. But to me, the most important thing, wh I whether this is the head coach or just great people who they bring in, but like, sure. I think the you need to somehow fix the offense. Like if that's been the problem for as offense. long as it's been, well, yeah. you need someone who is who Jimmy's has, my guy. <laughs> you need you need someone with an offensive mind. Yes. Yeah. Re really, I don't I don't I think having having a big name person is great, but I also have seen amazing success stories of people who are at lower level programs who just want a chance. Like I, I love the idea of um, the JMU head coach, oh, yeah. that's, a, that's a good one. What's his name again? Forget Kurt it right Sig now. Kurt Signetti. Kurt Signetti, like that's a cool one to me. Why not? Sure, okay, let's try something like that. To me, that matters a lot less than actually having somebody who, like to Mungro's point, the players believe in, who can recruit, which maybe that's where the, the their name does come in, but somebody who can recruit and somebody who has a good personality, who can, which Dino did, but who can bring in a bunch of different people, but most importantly, who can fix the offense. That is the biggest thing, I think, in order to win. And that's how you do all the things to make this entire community more successful. Like, it's crazy to say, but when you talk about, literally, the local economy and the fan base and the mood boosting and all of that, that is all dependent on winning. And you only have however many chances to do that per season. I think to maximize Syracuse's ability of getting a head coach, they need to hire someone that is definitely affiliated with the university because now you have the alumni, the people that played here, support because they know the person. They've mm -hmm. been around that person. They've seen them, you know, in different things. So they're willing to give money. That's they're a willing, great point. They're willing to feel good about the decision made, not saying, oh, well, they hired this guy out from uh, Nebraska or hired this guy out from Arkansas. It's like, who's this guy? You know what I mean? Okay, now you hired, okay, you hired uh, D. Brown, my, my roommate. You know, yeah. he coaches football. Uh, you know, why not give him a shot? You know, he, he has a good resume. Um, people know who that who, who he is. He's been around, played professional football. Younger kids uh, will know know his name, stuff like that. So that's the type of strategy Syracuse has to use, and they got to think about it this time. Because you know, with Babers, I thought it was a good hire at first. But then I'm saying to myself, you know, he's trying to bring his stuff in, and he's not even looking at his team. He's saying, well, this is what I'm going to run. This is how I'm going to do it. It's not saying, okay, this is what this is what I have. This is how I'm going to dissect it. This is why I think it will work. This won't work. It's like, no, we're going to try it my way. My way only. We're going to go 100 miles per hour. And where all that, where, where did that get us? That got us offsides, penalties, <laughs> because the guys weren't ready for that. They weren't. They didn't have the ability to do that. You got to start small to build big. I think we, I'm going to push back on one year, and that was he did adjust to having an All-American running back, which yeah, I don't wow. think you have a choice to. Where I think he was like, well, we do have a Sean Tucker. I think we should use that a lot. <laughs> one last tidbit, um, and I, I want to get your final thoughts from you guys. Uh, Wildak made a mention of he's he he has a peaked interest in someone with a special teams background. I thought that was really interesting. Um, that that is a point of focus and a point of emphasis for him. I, I don't know if it, how you guys respond to that. Special I just thought teams that was, matter. I mean, special teams matter. Special teams matter, but I'm just going to let you know right now. You're going with a big O. I'm looking for offense, someone that could generate the, the, uh, the offense. Okay. Because as long as you have that, you can find you have the players on your offense to put in the special team spots. Mm -hmm. So we need offensive coordinator. If I'm, I'm with him the whole may, way. If I may counter that mindset. Uh, you may not counter. Okay, you, 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 you are me, not the host here. Well, you, sir. Request Tommy, denied. Tommy Thrown out by the denied. court. Uh, uh, <laughs> counter, uh, counter approved. Here's the thing, like, uh, and I will use. I understand. <laughs> Overruled. Sustained. 
I understand the NFL is a completely different world than college. But you look at a guy like uh, John Harbaugh with Baltimore, who started as a special teams coach. And what that does, especially for a new coach, is it allows him to let the coordinators run their side of the ball, offensive, defensive. And special teams coaches make very small decisions over the course of a game, but they're sometimes very big ones, and that, and that allows the head coach to say, like, hey, let's take a time out here because of situational football, rather than it being an offensive guy who's calling plays and then also having to worry about those game management decisions. I don't think it's I don't I I I see what you're saying, but I don't think it's an automatic that if we get an offensive minded coach that he's the one doing the play calling. I don't think that's like a I don't think that's like a guaranteed I would say thing. it's like a 50-50 that he's going to take on play calling cuz he's bringing in his offense though and needs to teach it. Unless he has somebody he trusts to come along with him to be the OC and to like He's going to be do doing see package deals. Yeah, you do. But like, I just think that you're giving a little too little credit to the idea of potentially hiring someone with a special teams background as a head coach. Uh, I d- Let's keep moving on, Tom. Okay. Let's All right. Final on. thoughts from you guys. <laughs> One on last mind? thing, yeah, that I want to bring up from what Wild Hack said earlier today that we haven't touched on yet and I think is important because right in these next few weeks, we're going to be looking for clues. We're going to be looking for anything we can get to see who they're going to hire. Obviously, we touched on the Northeastern thing. He reiterated that multiple times. That's something that's important to him to have somebody with those East Coast connections come in and try to get those recruits. But something that I thought was really interesting was he mentioned even more so player development and player retention. And that's something that's more important than ever with the transfer portal. He brought up by name guys like Jihad Carter, Deuce Chestnut, who went on to these bigger programs, Ohio State, LSU, haven't played. Like, not, th- he said Deuce Chestnut specifically would have been a three year starter at Syracuse. He goes to LSU. Nobody even knows if he's on the active roster. So I just thought that was a really interesting piece of he's going to be looking for somebody that can motivate these guys to see the vision, to want to stay here, and to want to win here. And I think that's players did want to do that for Dino Babers for a long time. But I just think eight years, you, you, you're out of time. I mean, also, they, also money. End of the day, right. I don't think what they were being offered at LSU, Ohio State, I'm sure was <laughs> a little bit more. Was a little bit more, <laughs> of and course. That's, of and course. that's and I think you need and both. That's be, and that's being right. on the bench, right? <laughs> but that's I, being on the bench, I just think Wild had <laughs> making 50k. <laughs> <laughs> I don't play. Yeah. Um, but like I like you brought up, like if they're interested in going to the NFL and stuff like that, I just think that Wild Hack bringing that up is encouraging because. I think he sees like the deeper problem of like retaining these players and it's not just recruiting anymore. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, when you say like, you know, the whole squad, when you go to division one school, that's what your goal is to play professional football. So by having alumni that has played professional football around the guys uh, that are positive and, you know, and just being in the guys there, showing them and telling them, you know, positive things. Uh, I think that's great for young men because they're going to go through so much and throw much, so much psychological stuff. Like even right now, I mean, these kids' heads are up there spinning right now. They don't have a head coach. Yeah. So, you know, some kids right now are thinking as we speak, oh, I'm, 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 I should go to this school or maybe, maybe I should leave here or should I stay? You know, right now, you know, as confusing as we are, who's going to be the next head coach, the players are saying, this, saying the same thing. Should I stay here or should I leave? Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of stuff that, you know, what's going to make these kids stay? You know, who, what's going to make the, the, the skill position stay? Because I just, I mean, it's just common sense. If you were a skill position, would you stay? If you were a wide receiver, would you stay at Syracuse? No. Would you stay if you were a wide receiver? Absolutely. If I'm a wide receiver, no. If you're the running back, would you stay, Tommy? I mean, I think it all, de- like if, it yes, all depends. Yes, yes or no, Tommy? It all depends. It, okay. it truly does. Okay. I think if Brandon, it's, Brandon, it's someone that works for me. Brandon, if you're a, if, if you a running back, if you're the third string quarterback, would you stay? Third string quarterback? Well, no, I would go to a smaller school because there's no way I'm stiff in first string if they're bringing their guy in. <laughs> Okay. How about <laughs> he would make it difficult. He That's, never answers he your would questions make it diff- the way you want. If, if you said third string if, quarterback. Okay, if you're, wide, if, if you're a wide receiver, would you stay? At this point now. Okay. I, I think receiver, so, receiver so, I do agree I with mean, that. In, I think you want to go somewhere where you see that stability, you know what you're going to be working for. Is this offense work for me? Well, and, I mean, when you look at that, then you're saying to yourself, well, if I'm offensive lineman, I want to block and, you know, block for a good running back. I want to block for a good quarterback. Well, you don't have no good quarterback. You don't have a quarterback. You know, so yeah, it's it's, 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 a, it's a lot of stuff that um, Syracuse will have to dissect in the next uh, th- three or four months. Uh, but you know, first off, let's get this W. Let's get this W this week. Let's That's get this W. I, I think they're gonna throw everything in the kitchen sink. You know, they had nothing to lose at all. Halfback passes, double passes, uh, 
special teams, some 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 fakes. I mean, why not? I mean, I think they'll win. Let let the kids go out there and have fun. You think? Yeah. Your final thoughts. Listen, my final thought is just there are a lot of things that that Dino didn't have, and of course, we're going to talk in all of the coming weeks and months about this complex puzzle and how you solve it. But one thing that Dino did have is that he really is just a great guy. And I just wanted to make sure that I said that. I really enjoy getting to know him. I think that one thing that is important about a head coach in any position is that you're a good influence on the kids, you're well-liked in the community, and you're a good person. That's something that I'll be looking for in the next coach, and I see what I want in that because I saw it through Dino. Check all his boxes. Sorry, just something that I said earlier to everyone, like, like you said, we wanted it to be Dino. I think everybody in this community wanted it to be Dino a little bit, and it wasn't Dino, and now it's time to move on. But the support for him really was there. 100%. Yeah. Appreciated covering him. Appreciate getting to know him. The time he made for us um, was was great, giving us one-on-one sit-downs. Sit down. So um, he'll be missed. But end of like the day, there's a job to do. Like they say, next man up. Next man up. That's it. Orange Zone Podcast, James Mungro, Samantha Cross, and Ashley Winskowski. I'm Tommy Sladek. We have Brendan Hodges on the producer, Mike. Thank you, Billy Whitaker, Cars and Trucks, for helping us put this show together. We will be back maybe for some hoops talk this week. It's Thanksgiving, so stay with us. But, boy, are we going to have a busy and fun December <laughs> as we get this ball rolling on this search. Peace. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Turkey Day. <laughs> <laughs>